About 65 million years ago, a meteor dropped in unannounced and crashed Earth's party. The resulting impact created a huge explosion and a crater 100 miles wide. Debris from the impact was thrown high into the atmosphere, irreparably changing the climate. And the blast was so devastating that 75% of the species on the planet were wiped out. The dinosaurs couldn't see the fatal shot coming, and it's only a matter of time before another meteor comes flying our way. Do we have what it takes to spot, intercept, and wrangle the runaway space rock before it lands an extinction-sized punch? Let's find out. Welcome to Space Greed. Lucky for us, Earth exists in a very special pocket of space. We're protected by the other planets in our solar system and our own very unique atmosphere. Even though scientists have discovered 5,000 other planets, ours is the only one that can support life as we know it. We've clearly got a choice piece of real estate with all the best amenities, but that could all change in a blink. And it wouldn't be the first time Earth did a hard factory reset. So far, there have been at least five mass extinction events on this planet. The most famous mass extinction, the one that likely took out the dinosaurs, was caused by a meteor that was only six miles wide. For reference, Earth is just under 8,000 miles wide. So how did these relatively small rocks do so much damage? Two words, escape velocity. These smallish rocks collide with Earth like a bullet, except the average bullet makes an impact at around 1,800 miles per hour. Meteors move a bit faster. To escape Earth's gravity, a rocket needs to travel at least 25,020 miles per hour. And that same speed applies on the way back down too, meaning that any rock racing towards the surface will be traveling at a speed of at least 25,020 miles per hour. An impact traveling at that speed would really leave a mark. Look, objects collide with our planet all the time. In fact, meteoroids enter Earth's atmosphere from outer space every day. We've just got a really good security system. As these smaller rocks travel through our dense atmosphere, the air in front of them gets compressed, creating intense heat that burns up the celestial intruders before they have a chance to reach Earth's surface. But bigger meteors don't burn up in the night sky. They pierce through our planet's atmosphere and leave a pretty serious dent. In 1908, a 180-foot wide meteor exploded in the atmosphere near the stony Tunguska River in Russia. No impact crater was found. The object is believed to have exploded at a terrifyingly low altitude of three to six miles. That's less than the maximum altitude of a commercial flight. The explosion flattened approximately 80 million trees over an area of 830 square miles. Imagine what an explosion like that would do over an urban center. Scary stuff, but not to worry. By my calculations, we've got at least a thousand years to figure out how to swat away the next big rock. And speaking of big rocks, let's talk about the world enders, the dinosaur destroyers. These are the objects that clock in at about a mile wide. These juggernauts are expected to hit Earth once every 200,000 years. If a rock that big made an impact on land, it would produce a 20 mile wide crater and wreak havoc on everything around it. The impact would release a billion times the energy of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings. A billion, with a B. But what if a mile-wide meteor hits the ocean? Are we any better off? Since water makes up over 70% of the Earth's surface, an impact over a body of water is way more likely. An asteroid impact on the ocean would set off a very large tsunami, the type of city-destroying wave we've all seen in the movies. In fact, scientists recently reconstructed an impact that happened 3.26 billion years ago. A 36-mile-wide asteroid made impact over the ocean near what is now called Rhode Island. The oceans boiled from the heat, and the planet's atmosphere was red hot from the dust and debris that filled the sky and rained down like fire from above. The reality is that no matter where a rock this big hits, it's game over for everything on Earth. So are we safe or not? Statistically speaking, yes, but nobody knows for certain. There is one potentially dangerous asteroid that was discovered in 1999, and it goes by the name Bennu. It clocks in at just under one-third of a mile. For context, that's wider than the Empire State Building is tall. And it has a 1 in 1800 chance of hitting the Earth between 2178 and 2290. 
Currently, there's a 99.94% probability that Bennu is not on an impact trajectory with us. I like those odds. But how long will our luck last? As it currently stands, luck is our planet's best and only strategy for avoiding extinction at the hands of a large asteroid. You would think we'd be working very hard to solve such a problem, but nope, luck is all we got. There is currently no spacecraft or technology capable of rising up at a moment's notice to stop a space rock on a collision course. We are, however, hard at work detecting all the potential dangerous rocks nearby. Near-Earth objects are potentially hazardous asteroids and comets that come within 30 million miles of Earth's orbit. Back in 1998, NASA set a goal to discover 90% of the so-called near-Earth objects estimated to be larger than 0.62 miles in diameter. Why 0.62? because objects around this size are more likely to have a global impact when they collide with the planet. Advanced imaging software compares recently captured images of specific areas of the sky to images captured previously. So far, we've detected plenty. Scientists believe that we've already discovered 94% of objects larger than this 0.62 mile threshold. And thankfully, none have a high probability for a collision course with Earth. The weakest link in our asteroid wrangling future is the initial detection. Just like an outfielder on a sunny day, our telescopes here on Earth can't see objects coming from the direction of the sun. Plus, these terrestrial telescopes are also affected by weather conditions and the phases of the moon. NASA has suggested using space-based telescopes to help overcome these limitations. That's where NASA's latest mission comes in the NEO Surveyor. NASA's NEO Surveyor is a mission to launch a small but powerful telescope into space to help detect smaller objects that could pose a regional threat. Surveyor operates using two heat-sensing infrared wavelengths and will be capable of detecting both bright and dark asteroids, which, coincidentally, are the most difficult to find. Over the course of its five-year mission, NASA aims to find at least two-thirds of all near-Earth objects larger than 460 feet in 10 years the plan is to have a 90% map of all the rocks above our heads. The project is already fully funded and is due to launch in 2026, with a cost between $500 and $600 million. When it comes to our fight against giant space rocks, time is our scarcest resource. That's because once we identify a doomsday meteor, NASA estimates that it would still need a lead time of between 5 and 10 years to respond, and we may not have that luxury. If NASA does manage to detect a threat a decade away, they have three main tools in their planetary defense arsenal to deal with it. The first is the most fun. Blow it up. The idea is to detonate an explosive device near an oncoming asteroid to break it up into smaller, less dangerous chunks. Destroying it may sound simple, but it's actually incredibly difficult to pull off. Not to mention that there's also the possibility that the asteroid's fragments could reassemble under the gravitational force of their own large mass. The second is lasers. And who doesn't love lasers? The idea is that we could use targeted laser technology to heat up and vaporize the space rock enough to change its orbital path. Unfortunately for laser fans, these types of slow push methods have been ruled out because they are the most expensive and have the lowest level of technical readiness. The third, and NASA's preferred approach, is the kinetic method, where we send an unmanned spacecraft to slam into the asteroid, knocking it off its trajectory. NASA launched the Double Asteroid Redirection test, or DART, in fall 2021, with a collision plan for the following year. The DART spacecraft will ride a SpaceX rocket into space and then smash into a 520-foot-wide asteroid called Dimorphos at 13,500 miles per hour. The asteroid doesn't pose a threat to Earth, but scientists are going to give it the low shoulder with the spacecraft to test out the tech. Scientists believe that a nudge like that would be enough to deflect an Earth-bound asteroid from its collision course. The only catch? It will take a very large spacecraft to move a mile-wide rock, so while nudging smaller rocks might work, we can't deal with the big ones quite yet. When we think about examples of the modern world's response to global calamities, it's impossible not to consider COVID-19. Under Operation Warp Speed, the U.S. government spent $18 billion to fund the research and the development to combat the virus. This investment, with global collaboration, led to the rapid development of a solution in the face of an unprecedented crisis. The same could be true for any other existential threat that would put mankind at risk. You know, something like a huge asteroid? 
The good news? A deflection mission would only cost between $500 million and $1 billion, and that's small potatoes and big business for space's private sector. Besides, there's no way anyone can politicize an asteroid response, right? Right? Companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin are already making big bank, developing rockets to launch equipment like infrared meteor tracking telescopes into space cheaply and reliably. It won't be long until private companies are fighting for lucrative government contracts to develop spacecraft capable of wrangling asteroids. The future cowboys in space. The legend himself, Carl Sagan, once warned that the development of technology to deflect asteroids could have unforeseen consequences and malevolent uses. It was his concern that the same tech used to deflect could be used to direct asteroids to hit other countries. But look, even if Sagan was a bit doom and gloom, international agreements will be necessary to ensure that any missions launched to deflect asteroids will avoid Earth altogether and not just specific locations. Protecting the planet from a potential asteroid or comet is an example of where private interests and public needs overlap. Science fiction writers have imagined a future where humanity is called to unite and fight against a threat larger than life itself. It remains to be seen whether an asteroid can be the catalyst for a truly united human species. But one thing's for certain, we won't go down without a fight. For more videos like this, subscribe to this channel right now and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any great content. Also, look out for a curiosity stream on social media. Links in the description. Ooh.